YouTube, the final frontier. These are the ramblings of the Cult Emporium, its ongoing mission to explore bits of telly, to seek out the gossip and rumours, to boldly go where no doable barker has gone before. Star Trek edition of Cult Emporium. I am Philly Oh Wow Bimo, and I've got with me uh, a man whose uh, filter was taken from co- by Cognition Pirates, uh, Robert Righthook Cope. <laughs> and <laughs> where, where are you getting this stuff from? <laughs> uh, those are both references to the most recent uh, episodes of Star Trek Discovery. Oh, I uh, don't. Which... I, I don't pay any attention to that. Anyway, what I will say is, yes. Live long and prosper. Yeah. Okay. So where, where are we starting? Because there's there's a lot going on, isn't there, uh, in the Star Trek world? Uh, yes. Well, we'll we'll we'll, um, we'll start with something that's that's just finished, which was the um, the Discovery Channel. I want to say the Disco- no uh, the History Channel's series of yeah. documentaries uh, called The Center Seat, uh, which uh, purported to cover all of Star Trek, uh, a documentary series. Uh, from the beginning, uh, but actually it, it stopped just short of Star Trek Discovery. Uh, but it was a very good series. Uh, there was about, I think, about eight or nine parts all said and done. And uh, it was narrated by uh, Gates McFadden. I have to say that um, I learnt an awful lot about the uh, Star Trek world. I mean, I didn't realise what a, a pariah Gene Roddenberry had been at Paramount for such a long time. Uh, he, yeah. he, he was considered a, a meddler, wasn't he? Rather than you know the glorious creator of the franchise. Yeah, and and it, it was interesting as as Doctor Who fans to see the the similarities between him and and John Nathan Turner in in that when he wasn't getting what he wanted from his bosses, uh, he would go and stir things up in in, in fan service. In fandom, yeah, because he had he had the ear of the fans, hadn't he? Yeah, um, and and also I thought it was really interesting about how Star Trek started off as an independent production from, from Desilu Productions. Um, so I, I haven't seen it yet, but I know there's a new movie with Nicole Kidman starring um, uh, starring as Lucille Ball. And, That's right. And Howard, yeah, and Javier Bardem as, as Desi Arnaz. Um, but I didn't realise like what a, a player she was in, in television and how and how Star Trek was, was her sort of... Uh, last ditch attempt really to get to get some some clout for her studios and, and get control back and, and get her own property so that, that was really interesting and something I've not not heard before um, and then the format of the series tended to be that they would pick up on specific episodes that were that were special about about each each series so um, so in, in the next generation they talked a lot about yesterday's enterprise uh, which is the episode that brought Tasha Yar back from the dead and actually gave her a be- a be- the best storyline that she'd ever had and much better than when she was a regular on the series. Uh, Deep Space Nine, it talked about uh, the the episode In the Pale Moonlight, which which was deemed very untrekkian at the time. And, and then uh, in the Voyager episode, I was really impressed uh, at how... Kate Mulgrew, or impressed with Kate Mulgrew, how she copped to making the environment on set uncomfortable when Jerry Ryan was brought in as, as Seven of Nine. Uh, this sort of feeling that there was like this this young, sexy thing that was being brought in to boost the ratings and how it caused ructions among, amongst the cast and perhaps they didn't handle it in the best way possible. Well, I think that's happened on many uh, a series outside of the cult world you know it's, it's just that the star trek had a little dose of of that set behavior uh, yeah. it's gone on you know throughout television history really yeah so so it's very much recommended and it, it's a great place especially for international viewers uh, placing into context how those series were seen in america because i just thought that voyager well it ran for seven series so it must have been popular but actually it was on a network that only certain 
uh, certain states could could get because the transmitter signal was really weak and and not everybody could receive the UPN network. So Voyager of wasn't. Course, the, I I got um, Uhura scanning all frequencies, so I I managed to <laughs> to tune into it. Yeah, uh, communications officer is always yeah. important, is always important. <laughs> Never let it be said that they're just a glorified phone operator. It's a no, 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 no. I won't have it. Um, so uh, moving on, uh, we've just had the return of of Star Trek uh, Discovery uh, mm-hmm. season four, which has had been on a mid season hiatus, but is now is now back. Um, and um, where are we up to with this ongoing storyline then? Well, um, Book and Tekka, they've uh, done one, haven't they? Tarka. Uh, Tarka, that's it, not Tekka. Where, where have I got Tekka from? Doctor Who World. Now, to be quiet. Um, Tarka, uh, they've done one and gone off to um, battle the uh, Dark Matter Anomaly, uh, uh, but they've uh, they've been followed by Burnham, who tr- traces them to some station or other, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. Doesn't she, sorry. Uh, and uh, they're both after, what, what is that thing they're both after? Um, oh, um, I, the, so the, the, they're off the I, Isolinium. Isolinium, that's it. Uh, and it's almost like a casino, isn't it, that, that, that they're in? I, I'm trying to remember the, the character. So, so you, it's on the Karma Barge. The <laughs> Karma the Barge? That was it. It was, it was, uh, it was uh, Harker's, Harker's Karma Barge was the name. <laughs> this is the name of this. This it was a, it was a, a very sort of uh, cantina esque, uh, mm. a little bit of the Star Wars influence. But it was nice to see this, and, and almost like one of those James Bond casino scenes in many ways. Yeah, because they're all they're always very a bit stuffy sometimes. The aliens in, in Star Trek sitting around conference tables. So this this was sort of the weird part of the galaxy um, that that we got to see, and we got a lot of comedy. We got uh, Joanne. Oasaken, who is our um, helm officer, and usually we don't we don't get much from her. No, um, no. Only little bits have, have been um, uh, been dripped out out across across the four se- se- seasons. So she got to go go in the ring and uh, and get get, in, get into a fight and, and grift grift because actually she knew what she was doing the whole time, and she got to, she got to have a little bit of a punch up. Um, and then and then we got to play space poker. Which mm. would probably be my only criticism of the episode, in that there was absolutely no stakes for the audience because I had no bloody idea what the rules were. So I was like, "Are they winning? Are they losing?" Yeah. <laughs> and the most obvious tells ever, like the whole time, like uh, she uh, Burnham was like was stroking a shoulder or like doing this mm. with the like they were all they were all like lots of close ups on people's yeah. eyebrows. And things. Yeah, you would never have guessed what was going on, would you? <laughs> By the no. way, they were behaving. Yeah. Um, so it, I mean, it's it kind of we were still sort of in the same place that we were before um, when you think about it, which which is that Book and Tarka have gone off to find the the dark matter anomaly and and an episode. I would give it about six out of ten. I didn't think it was the most fantastic episode of Discovery I'd ever seen. No, but but obviously um, it was needed to kind of just move that plot forward a little bit there. And I, and I, I will applaud them for for giving us a. Um, uh, for giving it as a tracking device, which is actually cloaked, because they do the same thing in Star Trek VI, where 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 Spock, where Kirk's about to go on trial, and Spock mm. slaps a transmitter on his back, and it's there the whole time, and the whole plan rests on the fact that nobody confiscates Kirk's coat from him. <laughs> from him, <laughs> so I was like, so, uh, so, and that's how they beam him off Aurora Penthe. So I was quite pleased that when Burnham placed the tracking device on this futuristic lava lamp. That it, yeah. it did uh, it did cloak itself so uh, so nobody can see it, but it was yeah it was it was a fun fun episode and it's good to, good to be back but it didn't particularly advance advance mm. the story, uh, but that was where that, that was where there were some good quotes we got Joanne oh wow I was say, oh, and then we had we had uh, Michael Right Hook Burnham and mm. and uh, I think Buck's name was Glow nickname was Glowworm so. <laughs> 
I know they'll be back next week uh, after the because we've had a little mid-season break, which Americans love, don't they? They love a mid-season break. It, yeah. it infuriates me to death because even after a couple of weeks, I can hardly remember what the plot was. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, remember, it's remembering to start to start seek to start watching it again, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. It's like, oh, is that on? Right, okay, I better find that. And it, and, and particularly. Um, because we've got, we've now got an increased Star Trek multiverse, haven't we? So uh, we've got to remember a lot of things about a lot of different uh, elements of the franchise. Yes. So I don't know if you can, if you can see, if you can see this, but there's a uh, oh no, because because of my background. Uh, th there we go. There's a whole list of, of dates here of, <laughs> of Star Trek, <laughs> of Star Trek that's that's coming up. Uh, it's coming on uh, for the, through the whole year. Mm. Um, so so we've already. I thought I thought that was your Tinder account. <laughs> is that is that all your dates on your tinder account uh i, I wish no my dates with with the, with the, with destiny and my dates with the future yeah. um so we've got um so we've just we've just got Disco discovery coming back um and then we uh, there's going to be 13 episodes of this season of discovery uh but on march the 3rd discovery for three weeks will be joined by da, 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 uh, da. Uh, by uh, Star Trek Picard, um, Jean Luc Picard himself is is back, um, so we've got a new a new season of that starting. Which well, look, to is it ever likely with my bad memory that I can't remember most of what's going on? Because I looked at, I thought, when was this on? It's, it's almost two years ago that the first series yeah. was on. Well, it it, lo it looks like you won't have to remember much of it because. Uh, Q's been meddling back in time and and seems to have created an alternate timeline. So everything's been been wiped away. Has it been rebooted? <laughs> it's been been rebooted, and it looks like it looks like he's going to like the crew is going to have to go back in time to where the timeline diverged. And of course, where did it diverge? It diverged in twenty first century Earth. So so we're going to have a lot of shenanigans, and I'm sure lots of commentary on how we did things rather stupidly in the yeah. year twenty twenty two. As in uh, Star Trek, uh, uh, what for the film? Uh, uh, Star Trek Four. Star okay. Trek Four. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, my my brains. I told you my before we started recording. My brain's gone tonight. Um, so we've got Star Trek Picard, and then we've got um, starting in May. Um, we've got Strange New Worlds, which, mm, is which I'm quite excited about. That about yeah, Captain um, Pike and his original Enterprise crew. Yeah, and th this is th this is promised to be a more episodic and, and more traditional traditional format, which I can see myself probably re if Strange New Worlds is any good, I can see myself rewatching that more because I've I've tried to go back into some of my favourite episodes of Discovery, but I'm often a bit confused like where the overall plot mm. is. I'm like, oh, is, is Ash Tyler a Klingon, or you know, is is this person on the bridge at the moment, or who's the captain at the moment? So that's the only thing about making Star Trek more serialised is that the rewatchability uh, isn't quite there. So so it'll be nice to have a more traditional track series. Yes, and do you do you think we're going to have some uh, some old foes returning in uh, Strange New Worlds? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of um, a lot of the history with the Romulans is is untapped. Um, they generally just like just reference that there was a, a Romulan war and and that 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 things were sort of frosty between between the Federation and the Romulans, but. Um, so I could see that being an avenue. I know nothing, but I, I did wonder if maybe... I've seen a rumour that, that maybe Khan might have been involved. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, there's an actress called uh, Christina Chung who is on the bridge crew, and she her surname is Noonien Singh. So she's ah, a, she, right. So she's a descendant. There of, is a, a connection to Khan there. Yeah. Um, and then I forget that there's a... There's a doctor on board who was actually seen in the original series working alongside um, McCoy in a few in a few episodes. So, oh. and then we've we've also got uh, Cadet Uhura as well is going to be on on board the ship. So it's suggesting that so by the time we picked up with Kirk, she was a lieutenant. But this, the suggestion is that she was already on the Enterprise and earned her stripes on, under Pike, which is is fine, and I don't think it contradicts any continuity. Because that's important, isn't it? Of course, very important. Um, and then we've got, um, and then of course we've got uh, Star Trek uh, Lower Decks, which is mm. the grown-up 
animated series, uh, the comedy animated series, and uh, Star Trek Prodigy has just wrapped its first season and they've announced it's got a second season. So, so they're all in the works as well. How do you feel about this much Star Trek, Rob? Well, I don't know really because um, obviously I've always wanted Star Trek content, but you can you can um, tire the audience with constant, you know, you've got to build up a thirst for things so that when they come back, you go, oh my God, this is brilliant. We've missed this. But if you've got constant wall to work, if one series is starting just as the other's finishing, and it, it seems to me you, you could easily run out of steam quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, that's what my fear is. Yeah, I, I, I've had similar thoughts. The only thing I, I would say is that back in the 90s, if you were to take 1996 as an example, which was a, a, a banner year for Star Trek, you got, um, so you got Deep Space Nine and Voyager in the same year, which was, uh, I think, 52 episodes of television a year. And those were the same series as well. And a feature film. At the, um, all running concurrently, that was overkill because, and it was the mm. same, the same uh, production team. It was the same producer over all of them. With these, they do seem to be uh, slightly siloed off, so they all seem quite separate from each other. And I think the premises are all they're in different centuries and in different time, different timelines, and and with different crew dynamics. Some are about ships, others are about rebels, and so. I would hope, I don't know, um, but I, I would hope that they've thought of this and maybe the idea is that it's going to be like the Marvel universe where geeks like me will watch all of it, but the rest of us, the, the, the uh, other viewers can just dip, dip in and out and choose their favourite flavour of, of Star Trek. So there'll mm. always be something Star Trek on, but but you don't have to watch all of it because I, I don't think they've, they've got any plans for epic crossovers between the different shows or anything, so... No, I mean, I, obviously, I veer towards the geek as well, and we'll probably be trying to watch, or apart from the, the the animation ones, I'll be pr trying to watch them all. But uh, I just wonder if you, your general television audience might kind of tire of them quickly. Yeah. But, you know, I, I hope that's not the case. Don't get me wrong. I hope that's not the case. And I am not the, yeah. you know, the portent of yeah. doom. But yeah. um, I mean, it does worry me a little bit. They're quite low episode orders, so that that's the only thing I would say is that the, the sort of ten episode seasons yeah. as opposed to 20, yeah. So 20. so we we might survive on that alone. That each one uh, it hasn't really got time to burn itself out. Yeah, and then just to add add to that uh, that list, so we know that Picard has got a third season, but it's it's always been a limited series. I mean, let's face it, uh, Patrick Stewart is advancing in years. So they've always known that that is kind of short term. Uh, Alex Kurtzman, who is the head honcho of, of all things Star Trek, has said that um, the Giorgio, Captain Giorgio series with Michelle Yeoh is still very much in play, as mm. is Star Trek Academy series, uh, a live action Star Trek Academy series has been been talked about but but uh, with, uh, with a lot of these things these something has to be in production always has to be in production so it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be you know, going to be with us immediately, but this, mm. they're just going in the background. So, and, and uh, is there anything happening with Star Trek on the big screen? Is that is that history now? The the the, re the Abrams reboot boot that uh, uh, happened. Yeah, for a while, Quentin Tarantino was was saying that he was interested because Quentin Tarantino is has mythologized himself and said that he's he's always going to do ten films and then he's going to retire. But those are written and directed. And he said that, and then he was like, well, maybe I might be interested in just directing a Star Trek film and that doesn't count. So there were, so I think they sort of, they were courting Quentin Tarantino for a while, but that's fallen by the wayside, um, probably because of his ego. Um, and last I heard, there was a film that was in production, but then there's a new studio head that's come in and jumped it all. So I think uh, cinematic Star Trek is... But maybe maybe the best place for Star Trek is at home is is on the small screen. I mean, I would in this age of streaming, I wouldn't be averse to maybe having 
Star Trek movies available on streaming. So maybe they're not released in the cinemas, but in the same way that Netflix and Amazon Prime release movies straight to home streaming. Instead of doing a full series, what about just doing a two hour movie about bringing Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto back or, or about mm. some little unta- or some untapped story in the Star Trek canon that we, we haven't heard of before or, or looking in on Deep Space Nine or something. I don't know. Yeah, because really, uh, when I think about it now, the lines uh, between cinema and, and uh, you know, streaming, they're, they're blurring now, aren't they? You know, everything's yeah. everything's starting to fuse together a little bit. So, you know, yeah. so so with, with a lot of, of, of things, you, you can either see them in the cinema, cinema or you can stream them at home. You're given the choice. Yeah. Um, and, and Star Trek's always been quite, has always told those smaller stories as well. It's, it's, it's trying to compete with, with, with Star Wars, but I don't yeah. think it, it ever, sh- ever should really. Because no. It, they do the occasional phase of battles, but even even a film like Star Trek uh, Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan, when you actually, which you think is really action packed, when you actually go back and watch it, it's a submarine film. It's it, it's a lot of of people sitting in the dark and shaking shaking yeah. about, and 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 there's not actually that many phaser battles or, or punch ups. Um, Star, Star Trek has always been a, no, a it's re- it's it's all about the the game of cat and mouse, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's uh, Star Trek, and, and talking of streaming, that brings us on to discussion of um, a Paramount Plus, uh, which is the the app that that Star Trek all along in America has been the new series have been released on there. Um, but to to bankroll this endeavor in the early years, they sold in 2017. They sold off the rights to Star Trek Discovery to Netflix internationally. Um, to ba- basically, they made the money back before they'd even um, shot mm. any any film because they'd already sold off the rights. Then they did the same thing with Star Trek Picard, that which went to Amazon, who was the highest bidder. So they were selling off pieces of it. But now they've decided that they want to launch Paramount Plus in the UK and in, in Europe. So they bought back the rights to Star Trek Discovery. Strange New Worlds is going to be on there. And I do worry that it's sort of overkill that maybe those deals would have been with existing streamers would have been better for the international market because now you're asking the audience you're basically inviting piracy from some from some corners and then the more casual viewers are probably just going to be i can't be bothered i think it might come free for sky customers so some people are going to get it but i i Mm -hmm. I don't know i feel like they're making a rod for their own back yeah um it's kind of the studios want it all don't they yeah, I think, uh, I think. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I just yeah, it gets very complex to me. You know, when when you know all these channels and some are carrying some content, some are carrying the other, and then you know uh, suddenly some content's on another streaming service. You know, it, it hops about. I, I get very confused by it all. Yeah, I think I think this, this isn't a comment on. Um, on Star Trek, in ge- I think this is a comment on streaming in general. Mm. I think we are reaching overkill. There was a in in the early years of streaming in sort of 2015 to 2018. Um, it was the audience was winning because it was net everything went to Netflix. It was like, oh, we want this, and we'll sell our Marvel series to Netflix, and we'll sell this to Netflix, and and it was all in one one place. And then people were like, well, and then the studios were like, well, why should we? sell it, give it to Netflix when we could do it ourselves. And that's when the audience starts to sort of to lose. And I think we're going to get to that kind of peak point where everybody's just got too many subscriptions. Yeah, that, that, that's the danger, isn't it? You you need yeah. to have about 15 subscriptions on the go to actually view, you know, as, it, as they're going out, various series that you're interested in. Yeah, oh, but then I'm I'm a lazy person that always forgets to cancel his direct debit. So and, and that's why. Well, that's because you've got so much money. That's why yeah. you you yeah. don't even care. Yeah. Whereas whereas I've got some friends that are like, well, I'll I'll um I'll get the free trial, the fourteen day free trial of this, and I'll watch every episode of the series I want to watch while it's free, and then I'll cancel it. Um, so maybe I'm just doing it wrong. <laughs> you are the Brit Box King. 
yeah <laughs> <laughs> all, all my, my my free my free uh trial of brit box is almost up i've got to make the decision should i keep you it? you said you were keeping it anyway you told I, me you I, were I, keeping it i am yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it's a good time in many ways to be a Trek fan when when you think of all those wilderness years we've lived through with, you know, just wanting some con- content. And now we, we've got so much content, we, we can't cope almost. Yeah, and, and I know um, certain loud corners of, of Twitter have been com- complaining about how Star Trek's going woke. And I would just go say, Star Trek's always been woke. Go and yes. go back and yes, watch I, the original. I, I would agree with that. Yes, I would agree. And with it, that. it is great to see in the nineties. Star Trek always used to fly this flag about how progressive it was and that first interracial kiss and, and a diverse bridge. And then in the nineties, things slowed down basically because they were in fear of the television executives and and mm. there was the rules and broadcasts and standards. And so it's great now to see them embracing gay characters, trans characters, non-binary characters, things that Star Trek should be should be doing, uh, which is looking to the future and an inclusive future. Um, so so I think Star Trek is is in is in rude health and it's in a very good place. Oh, here's a question for you. If I, I think I know the answer to this. If I took away all your Star Trek and then said, well, actually, I'll allow you to keep one, that's the one series that you can watch, um, which one would it be? Hmm. I think I do know your answer to this. What do you think I would say? I think your background says it all, really. Oh no, no! Uh, this this was just the the uh, it got more pixels than the. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> this was just better resolution. I think the one I would pick is Deep Space Nine. That's, oh, that, and that's the one I've never really watched, to be honest. Yeah, it's it's a, it was a little not not by today's standards, but it was a bit a bit more more serialized, mm. and, and it, it was uh, what I liked about Deep Space Nine. It was like, how do you uphold the Roddenberry vision? Mm in an inhospitable environment it was they came in at the end of, the federation came in at the end of a war and we we're basically having to act as, as as peacekeepers and there's just so many so many interesting characters in that series so it, it's a it, the original series maybe but I, I think i probably well for me i mean obviously my age so, says that i was you know, watching not not the original. I'm not that old. I didn't see the original broadcast, <laughs> but the the reruns as a child in the 70s is where I I got to know Star Trek. But if we discount that, because obviously that's the first one I came into contact with, I think I might go for Star Trek Voyager actually, oh, right. Be- only because I think there is a real motivation behind the story arcs because obviously it's a drift in space, trying to get back, and and, and you're not constantly uh thinking up of, of 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 an arc to to go with you've already got that arc it's a quest and i quite like that throughout the you know throughout the whole run. i know yeah i know it veers off at tangents but yeah. you know you've still got the element of all the way through the quest and i kind of i kind of like that see that it see voyager frustrated me in so much as it, it always hit the reset switch because it, you knew that they couldn't they couldn't get home until until series seven, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you knew that there was no possibility of them getting home. So, so I mean, they, they did they really... did stretch it out a little bit. To be honest, yeah. I mean, I mean, if it had finished after four series, then I think it would have been better. But I mean, I think I think I think around about the the, the fourth or fifth series, mm-hmm. series they stop doing those type of storylines where they meet an alien who's got a wormhole or a yeah, trans- yeah. <laughs> coil and maybe we'll get home and then at the last minute there'll be some moral judgment that using the transwarp coil will also destroy a population of millions so Janeway can't well, use it. Well that's Star Trek for you isn't yeah. it? The moral dilemmas. Yeah. Yeah but yeah, but yeah I think uh, apart from the original series which is I've always had a fondness for because it's you know it's where it all started. Um, yeah I think Star Trek Voyager for me. Now before we, before we wrap up has, but talking of Star Trek, well, this is this is dodgy Star Trek. This isn't really Star Trek. But uh, coming uh, in uh, the summer, the summer uh, 2022, we've all, we've also got the Orville. Uh, the season Orville three, season three with Seth MacFarlane, who uh, is the creator of Family Guy and uh, made. 
Fox so much money that they said, make whatever you want. And because he's such a Star Trek The Next Generation fanboy, he basically just made a funny version of, of The Next Generation. But as it's gone on, it's got less and less funny and it's just become mm. straight from Star Trek. Um, so so the Orville's coming back as well. And it, it's definitely worth worth a watch if you haven't got enough Star Trek to watch. Well, I watched the first series of the Orville and for some bizarre reason i don't know whether i got too much to watch at the time i didn't see the second season so how does the second season rate against the first season um yeah very very well um there's some uh upheavals and some cast changes in 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 the second season and they do they do their sort of riff on the best of both worlds as a big mm. a big two-parter um so isaac the robot uh the robot um his he, he meet, we meet his people who aren't very nice. So there's a big a big invasion, Earth invasion storyline, a big two parter, and and I think the last episode of season two is is really good. It's probably the best the best episode of the Orville so far. Oh right, it's going to so. be, be interesting to see the third season because they've gone off network. They've let they've left the Fox network and they're now going to. Um, a streaming service so there's no restrictions over episode lengths if they need a little mm -hmm. bit longer they can have it um, and it was filmed pre-pandemic and post-pandemic so it'll be fun watching the waistlines <laughs> <Yeah. way through. laughs> well you know it's it's quite it's quite an exciting time as we said to be a, a trek fan and, and an orville fan as well um yeah and, and we'll wait to see what transpires with uh, the rest of discovery to see if they um, solve all these problems with the dark matter anomaly then uh, what picard is up to in his uh, 21st century lockdown and um finally strange new worlds which as i said i think i'm probably most excited about because it, it, it kind of it almost veers back to the original premise doesn't it that from what from what we hear yeah um it looks like it's boldly going hmm. absolutely so uh, I, th I reckon we'll be back. We'll be back in the Doctor Who world next time, won't we? Uh, yeah, we've got a, a special coming up. The Sea Devil special. I forget the name of it. Um, yeah, Legend of the Sea Devils. Legend of the Sea Devils. We've got a, a blue a season twenty two Blu Ray box coming out, which is terribly uh, exciting for for eighties geeksters. And we've got a new a new uh, Trouton animation as as well. Oh so yes, but with, I don't think that's coming out till. Mayish time, Juneish time now. So, but yeah, I mean, the abominable snowman. That, that's uh, going to be a so very exciting though, release. Yeah, even though it's a quiet year for for Doctor Who, there's still lots of exciting things coming about. And at some point, we might find out who the next Doctor is as yeah. well. I think they'll probably spring that on us when we least expect it. Yeah. yeah so, time. yes, thank you for um, listening to our little. Uh, update on all things Star Trek. And thank you, Phil, for your, your vast amount of knowledge because you retain all the plots, all the facts and figures and all the news in your brain uh, in, a, in a way that I don't. It's a heavy burden. It's a heavy it, burden. It is a heavy burden. You haven't got a life, love. I know that. But, uh, you know, it is appreciated to, for you to bring your in-depth knowledge to uh, the the pod bite. So, uh, yes, let's uh, let's beam out of here. And uh, oh, I've got my. Th where, where did I put my thing now? I've lost it now. I, I had a. I had a, a Star Trek thing. Didn't I? Ah, I found it again. Look, beam us up, Scotty. What part? End game.